Welcome to the MBA 50 interview series. I'm here at the IE Business School in Madrid uh, with the Dean Santiago Iniquez. It's great to see you again, uh, great Santiago. Great to see you too, Matt. Great uh, pleasure to have you here. As always, very busy doing uh, very many things. Um, you described recently uh, the idea that um, business education has been the success story of the 20th century and IE, arguably, has been the success story of business education in the 21st century. A long way still to go. Thanks very much <laughs> for that compliment. How have you achieved that success and what makes the IE Business School such a special place? Well, uh, this is an entrepreneurial place. It was founded by entrepreneurs and it has kept its uh, entrepreneurial birth uh, throughout the years. So I guess that uh, the secret of our success has been that uh, we have transgressed many of the rules throughout uh, the years. We were a, a quite a disruptive business school when we first uh, launched the Executive MBA 25 years ago. At that time, uh, I still remember some media uh, criticized us because uh, Executive MBAs were improper uh, executive program offerings at an academic uh, institution. We again broke the rules uh, when we launched uh, functional programs in finance, marketing, and again we did the same when we entered online education and offered blended programs. So we are transgressors, we are a disruptive in institution, we feel very innovative. This is a place where we like uh, and love change and uh, operate you know, many different uh, changes every year. Business schools have of course faced criticism in recent years as part of the financial crisis. Is there a need to, to reinvent management? Well absolutely, I mean management is a very young discipline. It's uh, not more than 100 years old as compared to medicine. I mean schools of architecture or schools of law have existed for a longer time. So we, re we, we have to realize that uh, management still needs lots of research we still need to achieve, you know, higher grounds of uh, understanding about how uh, organizations uh, behave or what is the response of uh, economic agents uh, to some uh, phenomena in the markets. And that's why we are seeing, you know, new disciplines such as uh, behavioral finance, for example, appearing at business schools. So this is something that we should realize. There's still many things to be developed and this is a science in the making. If you read uh, the manuals of medicine that were uh, published in the 30s, uh, in the last century, you'll realize that uh, bloodletting was a very common practice in order to uh, make patients you know, feel better. And uh, now we know it was, I mean, we, we, we listen to these remedies uh, horrified because they, they make patients actually die. So when we now read some of the advices by financial managers in the 80s or the 90s about, about mortgages and, how, you know, and about the diversification of risk, we'll f we feel something very similar. Mm. Of course, we need to adjust uh, our curriculum. We need to bring in the new trends, the new knowledge. We need to do better and more relevant research. But uh, business is still the hottest uh, topic, both in terms of uh, demand as well as in terms of uh, needs in society. Now you've been described as an ambassador of, of European business schools um, and you've written a new book, The Learning Curve, um, in which um, you look at uh, business education and also the future of business education. So what do you prescribe for its future? Well I guess uh, what, what I propose in my book is uh, to explore three different fronts. The first one is the front of the faculty and I propose a profile for the future of the faculty which I call kangurus, not just uh, old uh, or traditional gurus who are the ones that produce wise knowledge, but uh, kangurus, and by that I mean uh, academics who may jump from research into the classroom, into the interaction with uh, the top management. Uh, can jump, you know, very quickly and combine these different facets with uh, equal competence and professionality. The second front that I propose is uh, developing more uh, knowledge and experimenting with new tools uh, in uh, the recognition of the multiple intelligences in students. 
education has been focused mostly on uh, traditional uh, analytical intelligence. This is the way uh, we admit students at business schools or uh, in academia in general. We use uh, tests and admissions process that are focused on IQ uh, tests on an analytical skills. And we need to identify and assess better other forms of intelligence which includes emotional, spatial, artistic, relational uh, forms of intelligence that have to do more with success in real and professional life than traditional forms of intelligence. So we are now experimenting here, for example, at Thai Business School, uh, both in terms of uh, the admissions processes as well as in the assessment, assessment processes in the programs. We need to stimulate the entrepreneurial skills. We need to stimulate more emotional intelligence that produce better leaders and managers than just, you know, uh, giving importance uh, to the traditional skills. No? And the third front that I examine is uh, the new learning formats and forms of delivery. I believe that uh, technologies, new technologies uh, of information and communication are providing excellent opportunities to uh, develop more intense, fruitful and effective learning processes. So uh, again, you know, here at IE we are introducing blended formats that are rendering excellent results in terms of uh, the satisfaction of participants, in terms of the knowledge which is acquired in terms of the skills mm -hmm. that are developed. So these are my three main avenues for experimenting in the future and for innovation at business schools. Well, Santiago, it's been a pleasure to talk to you as always. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Matt.